This is Dr. Lee, and now we will cover the cardiovascular, cardiovascular system and lymphatic system. And this will conclude this system. Again, this is NBC 102, Unit 6 Lecture. The objectives of this presentation are to identify the organs and other structures of the cardiovascular and lymphatic systems. We're going to define and spell the word parts, build and analyze the medical terms using word parts, define, pronounce, and spell the disease and disorder, diagnostic surgical and complementary terms for cardiovascular and lymphatic systems, and interpret the meaning of abbreviations. We'll also be able to read medical documents and interpret medical terminology contained in them. The function of the lymphatic system. So the function of the lymphatic system is, to, is for the removal of excessive tissue fluid, which develops from increased metabolic activity. The, lymphocyte, the lymphatics or lymph vessels are found throughout most of the body. So here's a good graphic that shows how the lymph, lymphatic system works. So you have the adrenaloid or tonsils, and then you have the right lymphatic duct, duct entering the vein, uh, the thymus, and you have the lymph nodes throughout the body. Uh, you have your spleen, which is the integral part of the lymphatic system. Um, and then you have your lymph nodes, like as I mentioned, and these are um, throughout the entire body, you'll find lymph nodes. Uh, is within the bones, you have the bone marrow, which is an integral part of the lymphatic system. Um, and then you'll see within the lymph nodes themselves, you'll have uh, lymphatic vessels, the blood capillary, lymphatic capillary, the interstitial fluid, and the tissue cell. Now the lymph is a transparent, usually colorless tissue fluid. The lymph nodes are small spherical bodies made up of lymphoid tissue, and they act as filters in keeping substances such as bacteria from the blood. The spleen is located in the left side of the abdominal cavity between the stomach and the diaphragm. The largest lymphatic, it's the largest lymphatic organ in the body. The thymus gland is located anterior to the ascending aorta and posterior to the sternum between the lungs. It plays an important role in the development of the body's immune system. The aortic stenosis, um, you can see that here, and that's basically uh, where you have a constriction of the aorta. An aneurysm um, is when there's blood clots um, in, or blood burst of, the, um, of one of the uh, arteries. Now, this particular one shows an aortic aneurysm, which is pretty severe. Now, coarctation of the aorta is when they go in to try to repair that aorta. Now, a coronary artery bypass or graft um, is when they take, uh, they cut away parts of an artery that are clotted or blocked, um, and then they go ahead and bypass it. Um, with other, uh, to another location where, that, where there's better blood flow. So in a vein graft, uh, the vein is removed from the leg and it's stitched to the aorta and coronary artery. And in, in an internal mammary artery graft, the artery is relocated from the chest wall. A scent is basically like a little, um, uh, like a little wire, if you will, that's placed within the actual um, within the artery to keep it from constricting. Um, and then a, a, a catheter is inserted um, to actually uh, guide that that blood flow. A defibrillator. Um, you can place it within, um, so there's external defibrillators and then there's uh, internal defibrillators. And they basically work to start back the heart in case it stops um, or if there's a, an abnormal rhythm. 
And here is the electrical activity of the heart that can be monitored through an ECT or an EKG. Now, cardiac catheterization, um, similar to a stent in that they're just basically um, stopping one type of uh, blockage um, and then reversing it or redirecting it elsewhere. Um, so a catheter might be placed in to just kind of unblock that, um, that artery. And that is the end of this presentation.